Okay, y'all, so we're gonna jump right into it. First, I started off with a pair of my pajama pants that fit me well, and I laid it on top of my fabric, and as you know, fabric has to be right size facing. You're gonna lay the pants that fit you well on top of the fabric, and you're gonna use either a pencil or some chalk, and you're just gonna trace around it. And when you're tracing, be sure to add your seam allowance. If you don't add seam allowance, it's going to be too small when you cut it out. Um, after that, I'm just pinning it together and I am going to cut my pants legs out. Now you need two pieces for one leg. So you need four pieces in total. Make sure you have four pieces. And again, don't forget to cut your seam allowance because it'll be too tight and we don't have time for that. The next step is to cut out your pocket bags. Um, I know what a pocket bag looked like, so I'm just freehanding it. One of the mistakes that I made was the entryway was way too small. So you see me extending it here. However, it was still too small, but you basically wanna just follow this shape um, and just cut out your pocket bag. It's very simple. And again, just like your pants legs, you need four pieces because you need two pieces for each leg. So just fold that fabric in half as you see here so that you're cutting out all four pieces at one time. And it's easier if you pin it together. So if you're doing satin, the satin doesn't move around. So yeah, just pin it together and cut it out. I'll lead them in the battle while you're just too scared to act. I'll leave the knife right in my back. The next step is placing the pocket onto the pants. So you're gonna place it right sides to right sides. You're gonna measure down four inches from your waist, and then you're gonna take it to your overlock machine and surge those raw edges. We don't do raw edges over here, you feel me? Surge those raw edges. And if you don't have a serger, use a zigzag stitch on your smallest stitch so that you can clean those edges. But after you do that, you're gonna take your pants legs, you're gonna pin it right sides to right sides, and you wanna pin them at all of the points. So you wanna pin it at the waist, you wanna pin it at the beginning of the pocket, you wanna pin it at the bottom of the pocket, the crotch, and you wanna pin around that pocket bag. Um, yeah. After you do that, you can take it to your sewing machine, sew it, but you also, like I said, clean up those raw edges. We don't like raw edges, it's disgusting. Especially when you're working with satin because satin frays terribly, you definitely want to clean those raw edges. So again, if you don't have a serger, use a zigzag stitch on the tightest stitch so that it will clean those raw edges and you won't have a problem with fraying. And if you don't wanna do that, you can use like shears, The I don't know what they're called, but you can use that too. After you finish that, you want to turn one leg inside out and one leg right side out. Then you're going to put them right sides together. I know that was confusing, but whatever. I'm just showing you guys that I was up at 4.30 in the morning doing this, but whatever. Um, so like I said, the next step that you're going to do is pin it from the waist and the crotch. Hope I'm not talking too fast, but you're gonna pin it all the way around in this U-shape from the waist to the crotch. Once you do that, you should be able to take your pants and turn them right sides out, and they should look like this, all nice. And we're almost done. The next step is to hem the pants, which is the part that is at your ankle. I like to fold it in a half inch twice. So I fold it in a half inch once, and then I fold it in a half inch again so that there's no raw edges. What did I say earlier? We don't like raw edges, so no raw edges. Then I want to do my waist. So the only elastic that I had was about two inches thick, I think. And I didn't like that, it was too big. So I winded up cutting it in half and with my rotary cutter and using that. And the only thing I did, I pinned it together, pinned it to my waist, folded it over a half an inch and, no, I'm lying, I folded it over an inch and that was it. And then I tacked it in a few places and the pants were done. I'll keep hustling. Okay, so time for the bralette. So the way I got this triangle, I measured the length of my chest. I also measured the width and then just created a triangle. But as you see, it does not hug my chest the way it's supposed to. So I'm gonna create not a dart, but I'm basically going to cut out that triangle piece that you just saw me pinch so that when I sew it together, it hugs my chest versus it being straight up. It's, if it's straight up, it's not cute. We need it to hug. We need this thing to fit, you feel me? 
So after that part, you want to separate your pieces. And as you can see, that part that we pinched in the beginning is the part that we cut out. So once we sew it together, it's going to take the shape of our chest, which is th that's the way you get it to fit properly versus having gapping. If you ever have gapping in a top, it's because it's either no dart or you didn't add shape. So this is why we're doing it so that you can have shape in, in your bralette. So you're just going to do that to both of your pieces and make sure you have, let me see, two, four, six. You need eight pieces for the bralette. You need two for one side. Two, yep, you need eight pieces. Um, so here all I'm doing is lining them up right sides to right sides and we're going to sew it straight down the middle and we're going to do that for the outer part and we're also going to do it for our lining piece and i always say in my videos whatever you do to the outside you do to the lining because you want it to match up and because that's how you do it Hey, I got something, something to say. I'm just so sick of hearing everyone complain. So before we finish the cups, let's just get the straps out of the way. So all I did was fold over a piece that was a half an inch, folded it over, put two pins in it, or put a few pins in it, and I cut it out. I did not measure because I really didn't know how long I wanted my straps to be, so I literally just folded it over and cut it out. Um, and then, oh, and you need two. You need two straps, because you got two boobs two straps um, and then all I did was take it to my overlocker and I searched it that was it So this piece right here is the applique that I'll be using for my loungewear. Um, as you can see in the corner, I did get a yard of this fabric and I just cut out the appliques that I wanted to use on my bralette. And all I did was do a straight stitch um, where the raw edge is and then I did a zigzag stitch on the inside so that it would stay down and it wouldn't be flapping all over the place. And that's literally all I did. And then after that, you need to attach your straps and your lining. So you're gonna pin your strap to the middle of the bralette and you need your seams to match. So put the seam of the strap against the seam of the bralette. And then you're gonna just sew right sides to right sides um, your lining. So use as many pins as you need to. Sew right sides to right sides. And like I always say, after you sew, serge it, zigzag stitch, um, use those trying, not triangle, use those squiggly scissors, whatever. But do whatever you gotta do to not have raw edges, especially if you're using satin because it will fray and you will be mad. So before you serge it, you see me cutting a bit of the seam allowance because you want to turn it over and you want it to be as flat as possible. And you want that triangle to have somewhat of a point. If you don't, it'll be too stuffy and it won't look right. So I'm realizing that I did not show me cut the bands, but all I did was use the measurement around my body, which is 36 inches and I added 20 inches. So I have a tube here that is 56 inches by six inches. I also placed my bra cups 10 inches from my back seam so that it would perfectly line up to my chest when I tied it. That's all I did. After I did that, as you can see, that tube that is six inches wide, I'm going to fold that sucker in half so that when it is finished, it will be three inches. So when you do this, it is going to be quite difficult because you're going to have those bra cups inside of the three inch tube. Once you sew that, and again, serge your raw edges because it will fray and you will have holes in your top. Once you sew that, you're going to turn it inside out. Well, right sides out. And you're going to turn it right sides out. And then as you see here, I'm just using my, what is that, a seam ripper? I'm using my seam ripper to kind of get those points pointy because we like it pointy and like I said before be sure before you even surge be sure to like trim your seam allowance a little bit because you don't want it to be bulky on the inside so always trim your seam allowance and surge your seam allowance because we don't do raw edges so after you turn it right sides out you want to make sure that you sew that whole clothes and then literally you're done that's the bra and the pants come back from the robe and the do-rag